Hello everyone, today is a video of the BT Smart Hub 2 physical properties, so I'm basically going to take it out of the box, have a look at it, go through the manual. Um, this will be useful for anyone who is supporting family members or uh, customers, but they don't have access to a BT Smart Hub 2 to tell where the sockets are or what the lights mean and other things. So hopefully this is helpful to you. So it comes in a package which can fit through the letterbox, um, so very thin package, and inside it, it tells you what should be in the box, which is the BT Smart Hub 2, obviously, power cable and plug in two parts, the grey DSL cable, an ADSL or VDSL filter, DSL filter, Ethernet cable with two yellow ends, wireless settings sticker, which is interesting, yep, that is indeed a separate sticker, uh, and a bag for returning any old hub or router that you may have. So here is the router, we'll come back to that in a moment. A returns bag for sending your old hub back. BT did not used to need the old hub returned. Now, if you do not return, or at least on new contracts, if you do not return your BT hub, you will be charged for not doing so at the end of your contract or when you leave BT. They will send you a bill or bill you uh, for not returning the BT hub. So watch out uh, that you keep the hub if you're not going to use it, uh, or if you do leave, that you do return it. A switching power supply, so just a little wall wart that uh, supplies 12 volts at 1.5 amps. And helpfully, not many people do this, on the sticker it actually says what it's for. So it says for use with BT Smart Hub 2. So if this gets uh, moved around and detached from uh, the BT Hub, you at least know what it's for when you do find it in the future. It's very frustrating when people don't label what their power things are for. There's the UK plug that goes on the edge of that. Just slides on. If you want to remove it, push down on the tab. You can remove that again. So I'll come back and use that later. A wireless info sticker. along with the admin password to log into the router. And unlike the last one I videoed, the Let's Getting Started guide, or Let's Get Started guide, is a flimsy bit of paper with pretty much no details. The, the last one I looked at had a, a book with, a sizable book with a, quite a few pages in it. So, not a lot on the front of that. And this again is for anyone that's supporting anyone with this router that might uh, benefit from having a copy of the instructions in front of them. So you might want to pause this video if you are reading this, because I'm going to go just go through it fairly quickly. That is the instructions for connecting it up. And more usefully, the what the lights mean. So quite often when somebody rings me up, they're like, oh my internet's doing something and I don't understand what it's doing and they describe the lights to me the uh, easiest way I've found to uh, know what they're going on about is to have a copy of this sheet easily accessible uh, and then I can actually tell what's going on so there's several things it can do blue flashing purple no light orange green red flashing orange all mean different things so uh, again if it's if this is something you're looking at as to what um, somebody's hub is doing, you might want to pause the video now. Okay. Those can go back into there. And it comes with the yellow-ended Ethernet cable, the grey-ended DSL cable, and a DSL filter. 
all jam-packed into this box. Now let's have a look at the actual router itself. Comes in a bag, should be really easy to take out of the bag. There we go. So, slick looking, looks better in my opinion than the Vodafone router, which just looks like a weird square bit of plastic that's not even been designed very well. Um, you've got the feet on the underside, cooling vents, or airflow vents I should say, the removable bit of plastic with the wireless details on it, and these sockets on the back. On the far left we've got a grey broadband socket, which looks worryingly like it might just be standard Cat5, which will get very confusing for customers. Okay. It's not, it's Cat5. It is Cat5 size, but with an extra little notch on either side at the top, which stops a Cat5 cable going into it, so that's good. Then a phone port with a little sticker over it, USB, and then four yellow gigabit Ethernet sockets. The factory reset button is there a where the power plugs in and a physical power button and then on the sides of the device we've got WPS button and uh, and that's it inquisitive me wants to see what's underneath this phone socket I'm almost certain that it will be another RJ11 connector for connecting a telephone into the back of the router yeah, oh no it isn't, wow, it's a standard BT size socket, which saves you needing to have a converter. Quite a nice looking router in the scheme of how routers can look. Um, there will be two other videos probably within this series. If you would like to know what the web interface of this looks like, I'll do a video that has all of the web interface on it, every single page that I can find and there will also be a very short video about how to factory reset this router. So if you do want those, have a look in the description of the video and there should be a link to any other videos that I've made about this router. Hopefully this has been useful to you. If it has been, it would be really helpful to me if you wouldn't mind subscribing to my YouTube channel. You don't need to have the video notifications turned on, but the subscriber numbers really do help. Thank you very much.